What's happening, people? Welcome to the General Banter Podcast. Today we're recording on a Monday, ahead of or the release on Tuesday, the 30th of July. Where's the time gone, Maureen? I don't know. My guest today, much to people's disgust. <laughs> Thank you. My wife, who's way too hot for me, everyone tells me all the time. Go like this, Maureen. You your lipstick on your teeth. Maureen's pregnant Sorry. and she eats weird stuff now. And she eats about four to five uh, MAC lipsticks a week, which is a fortune. Be cheaper to take out for fancy dinners. If you do wear lipstick, though, in your lifetime, you do eat a lot of it. Do you? Is there anything in it that's bad for you? Not, no, not no. really. Is there fish in it? No. We'll research that later. Yeah. Let's mention a few things up top since we, we have the audience here. Uh, are we evenly balanced on screen, I feel like? No, never. I've allowed you a lot of room. Yeah, well, these chairs are too big. Yeah, they're shite. Anyway, let me pl- let me plug a few things. There's a tour coming up. There will be dates released soon. And I've said that every podcast yeah. since fucking three weeks ago. The, the mainland gigs are going to be Glasgow. Uh, what are the more? Glasgow, London. Glasgow, London, uh, Liverpool, Manchester. Manchester. And the Liverpool, Manchester, I know we're 14th and 15th. But we'll get them officially released and then everyone can buy tickets. That's that taken care of. Odyssey, second night is on sale. You know, I was at uh, the Vodafone Comedy Festival there in Dublin, and that's all everyone mentioned to me. Oh, how's it going? I see you didn't get a slot on the festival, but you're doing an arena up north, and Aaron McCann's here. Why? That's what a lot of them said. <laughs> Just that exact sentence? Yeah. Um, so we've got that second night's on sale. Get ready for a lot of stand-up material being released online. I have a lot of clips coming. And I, I was a bit, of a, sh- a bit ashamed of the set, you know what I mean? Uh, you're your own worst critic. Uh, you definitely are. Yeah, but uh, I watched it back and with the audio sync and everything, I was like, okay, that actually looks really good. You know? And the crowd are going, <sighs> you know? It was a great night. So It was a great night. It's so, great second night for the Odyssey is on sale. Get a ticket for that. Um, Lavery's Lazy Fringe, which is for all the people who didn't bother going to the Edinburgh Fringe, will be on uh, on the 7th of August. And very smartly, I've booked in a lot of tattoos that day, so I'm gonna be day? I'm gonna be coming in bleeding to death. Oh, very cool. So that's the seventh of August, and then uh, yeah, the, all the tour tickets are available at shine.net. Come to all the various regional shitholes that I'm going to. Down Patrick, Down Patrick, you name it, all those places. Um, merch, congettis.com. Merch is flying out. I'm plugging a lot of stuff, aren't I? This podcast is sponsored by congettis.com. Because fuck sponsors, okay? They're all like, oh, do stuff for us. No. It's sponsored by colongettis.com. Get yourself some merch. It's very swag. Is that right, it Maureen? It is very cool. What other shit will I mention while I'm here? I don't know. I've given up. Plugs are shite, aren't they? I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll play the intro. And come we'll to the things, you know. Be part come of to all the, the fun. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, fuck all it's this. Fun. It's all fun. Fuck like... all this plugs. Just come to the sh- All the effort goes into the shows, doesn't it? Flip sake, let me pl- <laughs> let me play this. I'm tired of rap. Oh, f- <laughs> tired and deaf. Don't worry about it. There is a song on my iTunes called Butt Plug. Oh, I don't know what that is. Make your liver quiver. This man will make your bladder splatter. Let's all welcome the world's godfather of soul. Colin Jettis. Uh, it's Jettis, actually. Jettis. 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 Fuck you. Far, it's far too long, isn't it? Now, this is a song that uh, Phil McEwen made one time called Butt Plug. Oh, is it called the Butt Plug? It sounds like it could be on an instructional video of how to put a butt plug in. Boink, 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 boink. <laughs> oh, it's got it in. Me and Aaron, on numerous occasions, have been, li- including yesterday, have been listening to rap songs, and he's like, "Do you think you could legit rap?" And I said, "I would be just embarrassed of how I sounded, but I could definitely write raps." And he goes, "I would be intrigued to hear it." And I oh. said, "And I said, uh, uh, we just need beats." And he goes, "Just use the beats that fill me at all the time." So there, I mean, there's there we could actually cut. Co- Do you know what would be good? Take the the song names that he's already named, like Butt Plug, you know. And actually, just rap about butt plugs. Do you know what I mean? That's quite a funky tune. I mean, there's a ton. 
this is this used to be the intro to the vlogs if you if you remember correctly six minute intro you ready 10 more minutes of this oh yeah you know what i'm saying and we're gonna call ourselves the soda boys but i just think that we'd probably be really famous straight <laughs> straight away that's my and i'm like I, do i have time for this do i have time to go on tour with the asap mob <laughs> To Sweden? I don't know if I have time. Oh. I don't want to take... You've already enough things to plug, obviously, so this yeah. is too many. Speaking of butt plugs... <laughs> Listen, I don't want to take business uh. away from all the other rappers in Northern Ireland who I have recently seen on a documentary. Now, I'm going to slag some people here, but in a friendly way, because shout out to anybody out there creating. Shout out there creating their own rap songs. Absolutely go for it. However, when I watched this, I nearly prolapsed when this guy, <laughs> I don't know what this guy's called. Essentially what's happened here, they've put on their own show, and as you do, you know what I mean? Homegrown, homegrown setup, that's what you do. You put on your own gigs, same as we do. Fair play. Now. Ross, so 10 minutes then you're on. Um, everyone Yo, I got huge bumps talking this shit. There Are we all gonna be? <laughs> I was by myself on the sofa and I nearly shit. Eat shit? Yes, you're yeah. all on. Now, this is going to kick off like some sort of Biggie Tupac thing. I may well get shot in the car park. Yeah, I don't know how you're... I mean, you are, you're giving them, like, appreciation for no, listen, doing a thing, but, like... Shout out to these dudes, right? Send me, send me your tunes. I'll play them on the podcast. Yeah, I'll like, ask a better question. How much will they care if I go into the fucking crowd and turn the fuck up and mosh the no, fuck? <laughs> Oh, there's certain things that you can't say when you have a Northern Irish accent. Pussy is one of them. You can't, <laughs> yeah. you can't be like, I'm going to need to get some fucking pussy. And you also can't say, what happens if I just turn up and wash the fuck out? <laughs> you you know you can't. It just, it doesn't, it just doesn't sound it's right. The, I think it's the least badass thing to go, just asking a quick question. Is it cool if I turn up and wash the fuck out? Because... I'm kind of wild. Excuse me, I would like to go mad. Excuse me, do you mind if we wash the fuck out and go nuts here or what? <laughs> <laughs> watch me go crazy. I'm so crazy. Yes, you're all yeah, on stage. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. ask a better question. How much will they care if I go into the fucking crowd and turn the fuck up and mosh the fuck? Uh, okay. <laughs> you know that when me and Aaron release butt plug at the start of it, it's going to be like, how much are they going to mind when I go out and fucking wash the fuck up and turn out and fucking holler? <laughs> Oh, dude, dude, I was sitting in Stramillis, sipping that lean. I th the problem is he actually has too good of an accent, that's why. Yeah. It's too, like, well-pronounced. Listen, I will be... I care if I go into the fucking crowd and turn the fuck up and mosh the fuck. Uh, okay. That's your next tune, bro. You take that sample and you put it at the start of your own track. Good question, how much will they care? Question. You know what I mean? When I'm big. Are we all gonna be on? Eat shit. Yes, you're yeah. all. We're all on stage. Yeah, yeah. I'll ask a better question. How much will they care if I go into the fucking crowd and turn the fuck up and mosh the yeah, fuck? Wah 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 wah. You know what I'm saying? Now, did I get a cramp in my gooch? I laughed that hard. I did. I laughed very hard at that. But also, fair play to them for just you know cranking out tracks, bro. You know, and I don't really know where to go from that. I didn't know that there was a Belfast rap scene. Well, that's because you're... Oh, they're trying to create one? That's because you're an owl doll. Well, I don't know what the rap scene is. It's just people... How much will they care if I go into the fucking crowd and turn the fuck up and mosh the fuck? They don't really look like rappers. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's you know... I don't know what you're supposed to look like, but... That's the way things are nowadays, you know what I mean? That's, that's how old you are. But we were talking about this, and I think it's a bit like back in the old days, if you're anyone like our age... <laughs> like around 30-ish, it's like being an emo now. Well, it is. Being it's like, a rapper. It's like, it's like emo it's goth like an, rap. Well, yeah. That she says emo goth rap. Oh, that's you got what it is. Lil Peep who died and who cares? Music. Absolute blurt. Full blurt. It's it's a bit like, it's a bit just like poetry. But. What do you mean not, poetry? Like they're not singing. So it's very like emo kind of stuff. Well, but they're just, doing it on a track. It's, it's just a mixture of shit. It's like, you know, is rap more accessible than like rock music? As in, can you do it easier? Yeah. Yeah, because you don't have to play an instrument. You don't have to do anything. You can just you can just fucking get some samples and play it, and then 
do, do some words over the top of it. But rap used to be all like fucking. I mean, this is where a bit of fucking, you know, toxic masculinity actually helps. Because when rap was all like, this is how cool I am, look at all the bitches, da 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 da. In fact, Tyler the Creator does it, and even though he's gay now, which was on Funk Flex, where he's all like, me and Flex picking up dudes, fucking them in the butt. Which, talk about me being a fucking prophet. I was literally talking about that in the podcast one time. That's true. Yeah. He's all like fucking running around town and fucking sucking each other's dicks and all this here. Uh, but it's the same bravado. You know what I mean? It's still it's still like proper hip hop. Now this is, you know, there's a lot of rap now with these fucking little peep ones and all where it's all like, I'm staying in on Friday, self-harming. <laughs> I've got no fucking friends and I'm gonna slit my wrists. That's that's the sort of shit they're singing. But that is funny how like I've got anxiety. <laughs> and that and you're supposed to, that like you're a rapper. I And he have wants to mosh the fuck out of that. <laughs> yeah no. Dude, let me fucking take two out diazepam and nap the fuck out in the corner. <laughs> Cause I'm fucking anxious, bro. Dude, do you mind if I anxiety the fuck out and throw up and don't come out of the house for two weeks? Is that what you do if you like crowd surf in like a punk gig? In there, you just run off stage and go to a dark corner and don't speak to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh my God. Mindfulness! <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Dude, do you mind if I do a body scan in the corner and fucking... Oh my God. I could have so had it up there. Dude, do you mind if I do a fucking... Uh... Dude... Get on, dude, do you mind if I get on the stage and do a fucking, like, headspace app for 10 minutes? <laughs> That's so... Like, we're not trying to take, make fun of people doing that, but it is so weird. How, how can you... you go from big pimping to, like... <laughs> you right, know, you like, to, I'm addicted to, to fucking... You need to put an example of a song on there. If anyone doesn't know what these kind of songs are like. Because I didn't really know. But... If you rem- if anyone remembers the old emo days, this is what this is. But now it's rap instead of it being like it's like, it's like, like rocky sort of. It's like don't look at me, but look at me while I be like fucking weird. It, yeah, it's the ultimate like I don't like attention, but let me be famous for this. Anyway, this podcast has taken a weird turn. Let me talk about my week. I want to see actually, right. actually, since we're on rappers, right? I was washing the fuck I did. <laughs> Here's my new song, Self Harm, dude! Do you sit down? Excuse me, Aaron. <laughs> went to Boots and bought some fucking razor blades, and I don't need it to shave because I'm 12, but then I cut so, myself! See, so you're making that sound too, like, fun, like Blink 182 or something? That's kind That's of not it even it's what like it is. Slow, it it's like Blink 169. It's, it's like bl- mm. one blink. <laughs> it's, it's, like, <laughs> it's like we doll eye blink. I took too many diets of pounds. I can only blink once. <laughs> but it's so, like, you know what I mean? It's like. My teacher disagrees with me. <laughs> I was in maths. I'm really angry. Fucking got detention. Wanna go home, mosh the fuck out, and self harm, and maybe have a dominance. Bitch, suck my dick. <laughs> Never seen a bitch or had anyone suck my dick. Probably not gonna suck my dick, cause I don't wash. Pass me the razor blades. <laughs> yeah, Domino forgot my sauce. Pass me the razor blades. I blade. ordered Southwest and it has no Southwest. <laughs> Pass the razor blades. I'm gonna cut through my fucking tartan trousers. <laughs> I would slit my uh, wrists in the bath, but I would be risking having a bath. <laughs> no thanks. Bitch is never gonna suck my dick, ever. <laughs> Cause I said the words bitch suck my dick, and that doesn't actually get your dick sucked anywhere. Past the Wilkinson sword. It's a Hydro 5, can't slit my wrists. Cause it's got a protective strip, and I can't slit my wrist. Oh, suck my dick. No one's gonna suck my dick. Somebody get me a chamomile tea or some other sort of sedative. Suck my dick, bitch. So we went to Action Bronson anyway. Uh, by we, you mean you and I? Me and I, my girlfriend. And we, we got there late and he was already on stage and uh, he played, Jesus, I don't know, six songs. And then it was over. Should have known that from last year. You big fat no cardio cunt. But at least he can rap, I'll tell you that. Yeah. 
That's true. At least he's got bars for days. Like. You know what I mean? He's yeah. like a fucking corner shop. What do you want? Bars? Chocolate bars? Mars bars? Um, but uh, yeah, he was on stage for no no time whatsoever. And uh, and then, but anyway, it was worth the whole trip because we came out a good forty minutes late. It was good actually because a lot of people were getting photos of me from down south, and I was like, this is an, this is an improvement. You know what I mean? The podcast must be doing the rounds. Uh, um, what would your <laughs> What would your rap name be? What would your emo rap name be? Ronnie Mascara. What? No. Ronnie Mascara. Ronnie. <laughs> Mo, Mo Scara. P- perfect. Oh, wow, that's good. Did you, did you make a weird noise out of your throat there? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> that's what being pregnant is. Just make weird noises. That come out of me. Um, so lot. we came out and we went in this Chinese restaurant, right? <laughs> and we looked at the menu and we're like, okay. No, f- first of all, we go in and there's no one in this restaurant. There is a Chinese family eating their dinner. And Aaron walks up to the family and just goes, are you still open? <laughs> and it was, <laughs> it was just a fucking <laughs> Chinese family. Oh, no. And Aaron. I was like, and, I, and it was weird because the girl actually went, oh, yeah, it's still open. Just out of politeness. And then he sat down, and I was like, "Did you?" Just, I was like, "You just ask a family where the, was the place open?" So they were sitting down. And he, yeah, and he goes, "Oh, they must. She they must work here or something." So uh, <laughs> then he goes, "Like, can we order to take away?" And the girl was like, "No, I'm just standing beside this table while they're eating." And then the girl was like, "I'll ask one of the staff." And then the staff come back, obviously in full uniform. And I was like, "You're just asking a Chinese family is the Chinese restaurant open?" And could he get takeaway? Yeah. And then they said... And we were so embarrassed. I'll ask the staff for you. Yeah, we were so embarrassed that we ordered two no beef beef way. noodle soups, which then I was like, can we get those to go? Which they had to give us in like three containers each. It was like the noodles and then the saucy bit of meat and then the broth all separately and we left. I was like, oh, so I... embarrassing. Which is, I said to him, it's like walking into McDonald's and just seeing the fattest cunt there. And we go like, <laughs> well, what's rap of the day, mate? It was like, I don't know. I'm just, <coughs> I'm just in here. <laughs> You know what I mean? Sorry, are you the McDonald family? <laughs> yeah. Are you Brian McDonald? <laughs> but I just can't, I didn't know they were sitting down. That would make sense if someone was just stand, like a random person was just standing there. They had bottles of wine and everything. Oh my God, stop it. Are you open? You Chinese bastards. Hilarious. Only Aaron could get away with that because he would just <clears throat> go up to someone and talk to them. I was like, he's <laughs> It's big fucking rain hard took now. Jesus Christ. But uh <clears throat> I'm choking to death. Um so uh yeah that was that was very well, the noodles good though. Very fucking funny. I had it the next day, it was absolutely delicious. They did actually look amazing. Mm. So <sighs> very tasty. Worth mm. it. Hundred percent worth it. What else did we get up to that week? We went out for um is Adam my brother-in-law now? Yeah. He's 30th. My sister's husband's 30th. Um, Went for dinner. To the, re- <coughs> to the restaurant Flame. And I said to my sister, as soon as I walked in, I was like, fuck you for booking this dinner here. Where there is no parking on there a really Friday night. There is no parking. You know? And I had a sore foot and you're pregnant. So I don't know who was worse. Me, definitely. You definitely complained But more. I was limping about there like a twat. And we finally get in there, and then you're waiting on like 25 people to arrive, and we didn't order for ages. You yeah, we probably I mean? didn't eat dinner to about to half nine, which is much too late for me at this stage, to be fair. Yeah. Not normally, but nowadays it is. How, could... about, how about me ordering? I was like, mm. yeah, give me that big giant T-bone. And then I was like, I hadn't seen it yet, and I was worried a wee bit. I was like, fuck, I'm not going to be able to eat this. And then it arrived, and I had it like it was a fucking... It was giant, but you... you... <coughs> it was yeah. giant, but it was it was quite thin. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I actually managed to dust it off pretty quickly. Not bad for 30 quid. I mean, it's nice food in there. Oh yeah, lovely. <coughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm just not really into like giant... Oh yeah, shout out to Maureen in a steakhouse a getting a, a fucking chickpea curry. I mean, if I had Weetabix on the menu, I would have ordered that instead. I wasn't, I don't know, I don't get hungry anymore. It's so weird. I have no room for it. <clears throat> I mean, I'm And get... it's a steak restaurant. I don't really... Can't really eat rare steak <clears throat> when you're pregnant, so I'd rather just not eat steak right now. So that was the reason. You'd rather have a proper one down the line. I mean, it was very nice vegetarian curry, but uh, yeah, 
what else did we get up to this week? I don't know. I, I went down to fucking um, Dublin there yesterday again with Aaron. Two Dublin trips in a week. Went down to the Vodafone Comedy Festival. He was doing a spot in there. I was chatting to everyone. Chatting to Jim Owen. Now, is, uh, how long has that been going for? Years. Years? I think, yeah. Always in that Ivy Gardens? Yeah. I would love to go. It looks only because we've been to Ivy Gardens now. It's a really it's, nice place. It's so so cool. And so cool. They just basically have like a bunch of uh, big tents, and the shows are on at half four and seven o'clock. But it's just <clears throat> so it's a lovely. It's actually a really good idea for like. But a again, it's you know it's like one of those. Uh, is it gonna load up? It's like one of those. Uh, it's like well, it's like any festival. It's just nice to fucking hang out. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can just go, chill out there. Am I on the? Some guy, if you have any podcast questions, your ma, what a wee fucking 12 year old wanker. Guess who he probably listens to? I don't even care. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, he probably moshes the fuck out. Darren McSee, my girlfriend said she doesn't like the podcast. She even had the cheek to say Culture Strip Club wasn't that funny. But she's going to me with the SSE. Can I tell her that she can't go and bring one of the lads instead? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Always bring one of the lads, you know what I mean? Don't bring your dumb girlfriend. <laughs> Hold on, there's loads of questions here. <clears throat> Would you rather? Oh, I hate that. Hate that question. Mm, 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 mm. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, Do you think we could ever organise a proper comedy festival in Belfast? That's exactly that's exactly what I was thinking when I was watching that. I was just like, somebody should do this. Uh... I would love to do something like that. I feel like it. There's been attempts at that in years gone by by different things culture things but it's never really worked out yeah it well, gets they, they try to they, i think it's over complicated I but mean, i like the idea of it being in one place i don't even think they, and have, you a, just, they, they have a spot nice enough no but it was well, mad though because yeah. you know like literally it was sort of touched on earlier but see because of the odyssey thing like so many people were coming up and being like oh colin Gettys, is it cool isn't it heard you're doing a you know like jardeth regan from irishman abroad and, uh is that what it's called an irishman Idiota, what's it called? Yeah. yeah. It's not called Idiota. <laughs> he came yeah. up and fucking was talking like Jim Owen and all. And it was weird. And then the guy who actually books the thing at the end was like, oh, Colin Giles, sorry we didn't book you. We'll get you next year for plenty of shit. And I was like, yeah. It's going to be a very busy year for you next year. Why? There's a lot of things penciled in already, isn't there? Pencil me. Big, really big fun things And too. by the way, let me, let me, like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I've said, uh, you know, I've said it before. The best comedians in Ireland are from Belfast. And I'll tell you that straight yeah. up right now, because I sat through, and I mean this with all my heart, some absolute fucking merd. Okay. I don't think people up here fucking appreciate the quality bla- of bloody here. blah, mass, fucking bloody blah. They're from guess guess where they're from? Ballymun. Something, something, something. Fucking, you know what I mean? I was like, ah, oh, fuck up, would you? And then, of course, as soon as they hear a Northern Irish accent, they're like. Yeah, they take and you're the like, fuck here. up, you all sound the same down here. Oh, do you mind Obama was here? Oh, the Celtic Tiger. Oh, fucking junkies in Dublin. Fucking mad, isn't it? Fuck up. String of shite. Aaron goes on, gets laughs. And then the only laughs that the fucking host got were making fun of Aaron's accent. And he's, he's the only one fucking did well. I don't like that. I don't like when people do that. Right. You know what I mean? It's an e- very easy and do you know job. what? Here's the, here's what happens. You all come up to fucking Lavery's and die in your dick. Bar a few ones who are actually funny. It will happen someday though that people realise either in the comedy scene and down south how good comedy is up north. But also I would love people <clears throat> who live in Northern Ireland to realise how good comedians from here are now. Yeah. There was, don't get me wrong, there was a large gap for a while that wasn't filled by enough comedians like if you say if you look at but the, now you could see some if you look at the last laveries it was fucking it was crazy wall to wall murder like and we were jam-packed which is i love seeing it because it's a lot of people coming to watch live comedy but there's so much good comedy up here and i don't think people appreciate it they go to maybe one show every two years 
maybe in the Odyssey or maybe in a big venue that of someone they've heard for years and years and years. Oh, I'm gonna go see Mickey People Flanagan don't go here. see live comedy enough. And what's gonna happen is everyone's gonna <clears> do really well. And we're gonna, you know, it's gonna and then be gonna, bigger. And, and they're then, gonna go, I could have seen and then them in gonna, libraries. And then they're gonna shit on, you know, it's like crabs in a bucket in Northern Ireland. Like people, people don't get as much recognition when they actually do well for themselves as they do when they're sort of on the way up. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like, oh, he's doing well for himself. Fair play, fair play, fair play. Oh, he's he's sort of made it now. Ah, fuck that guy. Yeah, what Think, an thinks he's better than everyone else. <laughs> yeah, you do. We've, we've said that before. No one praises you for doing well here. And they should. And like, they don't see the work, though. I think everyone just sees You know, like, the, literally, see, talking end. about the SSE and all that, and everyone's bought tickets, and that's unbelievable. But it's literally, like, if it serves any purpose, it's kind of like, if I can do it, then someone else can do it, then someone else can do it. And then you'll realise, like, oh, there's actually fucking, like, brilliance over here. Yeah, really, really talented people. You know, and you don't have to fucking not be a comedy fan and then go to fucking Lee Evans once a decade. Some guy, fair play to him, he was at Lavery's, but he he was like, he sent me a picture of Lee Evans. He goes, oh, you're number two to this guy. You two are my favourite. And I was like, what a strange collection of people to be into. Here's my list. Lee Evans and then you. I love watching dudes run around sweating. And then someone who actually writes material. You know what I mean? But people <laughs> still, and, I, and it's going to happen for a while yet, take it more seriously if you've been on TV still to this <clears throat> yeah. day and I'll tell and you TV is almost dead I'll tell you what I'll tell you what it is now if you see a comedian on TV it's because of something to do with their personality race sexuality something 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 they're ticking a box it's nothing to do with their talent yeah but I don't you, you'll people get, don't know that you'll get, I, I mean, don't think you could have all the fucking you know straight white hilarious meals of the day doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't matter a fuck. You have to be something else now. Like, and people don't know this. TV is quotas. Oh yeah. Whether that's a sitcom or if it's comedy, I mean, whatever it is, they have a we have this amount of boxes to tick. Yeah. If you fit in that box, you'll get on. Whereas people still, because it used to be back in the day, if you were the most talented at X Y Z, you would get a chance to be on TV to show that. People still have that mentality, I'm but it's not true. I'm sticking by that now. I'm like, it's not it's, the most talented it's, means you get on it's, TV. It's only your talent gets you by in libraries or something. Yeah. Fuck, fuck, but because see that, see this like folding to like fucking Vittorio was telling me they did a like a lucky draw gig night. Mm -hmm. Like it was a, like a potluck, like fucking take your name out of a hat. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh no, we have to do a girl thing and a and a boy one so that it's evil even evil <laughs> and you're like it's supposed to be a random fucking draw what the fuck has your gender got to do with it but that's not I, equality I know that's making it less equal by going that's fucking positive women discrimination women need or whatever more called. they still need their own yeah. set of chances you know that, that that doesn't do anybody any favours it has I to be think it, I really don't think it does no like I know that, rightly there's people out there who are sitting there going like Oh, here's another fucking gig with all meal lineups in Northern Ireland. Oh, here's all meals. And you're like, what are you complaining about? Are you complaining about a gig that you didn't get, that you never asked for, that you never yeah. tried for? Here's the way it goes. And you're not special. It used to be, can I have a gig there? Here's a video of me doing stand up. Or here's that's the amount of uh, stuff that, That's done. your part. Of, yeah, someone goes, this is what I've done. Here's my, here's my thing. And it's over to you now. If you like what you see, book me. And at the end of the day, at a certain point, comedy is like a business. So I can't just give someone a gig because they're whatever, female, you know, which is the most fucking ridiculous shit of all time. Like, you can't just give someone a gig because of something else other than their comedy ability. Yeah. Because it's a fucking stand-up night. You're going to be paid to do a job. If you can't do the job, it doesn't matter what fucking hole you're pissing out of. Do you know what I mean? I would love if there was tons of fucking women doing stand-up, but there's not. That's that's the fucking way it is now. Someone come forward and do it properly. Just be like, I know I'm a fucking comedian. I want to write. I want to write bits. I want to. I want to just try it till I get a certain level of like proficiency, and then I can gig around for money and do an actual job. That's how you do it. You don't go. Can I get a gig here? No, sorry, I haven't been doing stand-up that long. That's because I'm a woman, isn't it? No, it's because you're shite. Right now, you're shite. 
Yeah. It, there's also it. a lot of shite men doing it too, so oh, don't worry yeah, about yeah. that. No one's there's no tears shed over you the know? fucking, you know, hundreds of men that aren't getting gigs because they're fucking delirious. That's yeah. the wrong word. Deluded. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No one's like, why did that guy who just did fucking 95 Model McCann jokes not get a gig? I feel sorry for him. You know what I mean? Hashtag freedom for fucking rape jokes, Timmy. Oh, it drives me fucking mental. Mickey said that. He goes, that festival, he goes, there's a lot of girls were getting spots just because they're girls. And I dare say, you could see it. Do you know what I mean? Like a lot of open spotters being paid to be at a fucking comedy festival. It's just... It's, I, I don't it, see how that's going to help women, though, unfortunately. Well, yeah, you... Because Cause that, you, that, that uh, thing of, like, complaining about, oh, here's another male lineup. It's like... It's like... It's like writing one of the, you know, a big fucking open letter to, like... A company being like blah blah blah. I was not employed by these people because of something. And you go, oh, did you apply for it and go for the interview? No. It no, just yeah. It just goes. No, it no. just looks like your company would do that to me. No, That's what it looks no, like. no one's hunting you down. Trust me, trust me. If there was girls doing stand up in Northern Ireland and they were decent, they would work every fucking night of the week. Yeah. Because everybody would be like, people are like, well, it's unfair. Literally, people would be like, she's good. And it's good to fucking have a bit of fucking diversity. It is good. It's, you would be on every comedy club every night of the week. But in the but last... there's no one out there just doing it regular. The thing is, like, there's not the way you do stand up is you, all you all you have to focus on is getting better. Like, oh, there's a load of new guys do it. Like fucking Mark and James and fucking Jordan and all them boys who all they want to do is get better at comedy. There's no like, oh, I probably should have, you know. So like the Ulster Hall by now, everyone else is fucking doing it. They're not doing that. They're just going like, I'm just trying to get better, do more spots, whatever. That's the way to do it. Whereas a lot of people have this entitlement now where they're like, oh, I've done my gigs now, so why am I not being afforded the same opportunity as like a Mickey Bartlett who's been doing it for fucking 15 years? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, you don't get those things yet because you haven't put in decades of work. You know what I mean? People just have this instant like, uh, where's my money and stuff you know what I mean it's like it's weird it's so fucking weird it drives me nuts entitlement there's a major problem with it yeah get rid is. of it Um, I went fully off on one there didn't I Aaron read me out a meme yesterday and it said uh, some guy some guy said to someone like uh, oh you know little bo- little water now it has flip flippy lids on it she goes who's little water and he goes water from little you stupid cat <laughs> That's the other thing. You, ha- you have to be called little something. Yeah. Morning. Do you mind if I just turn up and wash the fuck out? Please go ahead, sir. No, I'm gonna turn up and answer some fucking questions <laughs> here. Uh, let me turn up. Do you like turn up? <laughs> let me turn up. Neeps and tatties. Okay. People keep sending me links on Instagram and I can't fucking. Why does that not work in Instagram? Links. Uh, don't know. Sometimes Weird. it does. Sometimes it doesn't. But uh, very sweaty in here, God. No. It's you just dishing out steam. Hmm? Dead air. Mm-hmm. What? Your ma. Fuck up. Look at those sexy photos of me looking sexy. Um, some legs on you, sir. Fair play. Uh, how do I tell my mate Wes his breath stinks? And that's from Nathan. That's one of Colin's pet hates too, isn't it? What? You hate when people's breath stinks and you give them chewing gum and they go, well, I'm alright. And mine smells worse than everybody's. No, it actually doesn't. You're uh, obsessed by it, that's why. Yeah, I eat chewing gum to the point where my neck gets sore, but uh, it's like... Why is it so offensive if someone's breath stinks? It just does. You just go, but no one can tell if their own breath smells bad. No, but you should a, You should have a level of awareness. You should. You know what I mean? I'm, I would be very like, if, am I going to talk to this person yeah. up close? What have I eaten or drink, drank? I don't. I don't even mind if someone has a like coffee breath or they stink of garlic or oh, something. Yeah, of the, of because, the actual thing they're eating. But it's it's the it's just a dirty bad breath. Like you, there's times yeah. where you've I've like been close to you or whatever, and you're like you're like your breath doesn't even smell bad. You're just like it just smells different. It smells di- not like you, yeah. And I have to like jump up and fucking like brush my teeth straight away. I think well because I you know was doing makeup, which I'm very close to people. Yeah. I'm a bit obsessed by it too. Yeah. There is nothing worse than someone's breath hitting you and it's like, oh no. 
You just gotta go, listen, your fucking your breath stinks. I'm your friend. I'm not trying to slag you, but let's get it sorted. Could you say that to someone? Like anything, make it into a joke so it's not... You're not being mean. You're doing it in a funny way. But the, usually, like, the most... The best way to do something is just very direct. Most people would appreciate knowing, I think. Would you yeah. not? Because, uh, you know, like... You get, you get like that fucking, uh, what's the one that's really stinky breath, but it's like something to do with your stomach, halitosis. Oh. You can get pills for that because it, it's like a bacteria in your stomach or something. Yeah. And it just fixes it. Do you know what I mean? It's not like, I was, where was I recently? And I was literally felt like apologizing to people being like, sorry, I had a lot of garlic previously. Anyway, fuck it. Yeah. You just got to tell them. Just be like, listen, bro. I like... You always think, like, would you appreciate it? Like, if, if you were walking around with, like, really stinky breath or your fucking fly was down or... How would you like someone to tell you it? Yeah. That's what you think. What way would you accept someone would, saying it, it to you? It would just be, like, a sincere, a level of sincerity where it's like, listen, yeah. I'm not being a dick, but I think you should fucking check, sort that out. Give me some feedback. And then be really offended when they're like, I think you should lose some weight. Like, fuck you, you smelly breath cunt. <laughs> Gav Boland, uh, sh- met, shout out to Gav, met him briefly there yeah. at the Action Bronson gig. Uh, very tall. Um, opinions on Action Bronson gig. I mean, it was class for, sure. for the fucking half hour. That when was the last, when was the other gig we went to? Can't Two remember. years ago. It wasn't last year, it was maybe. An arm was steaming and just bouncing through the f- yeah. shop front windows. But again, he was on stage for like 45 to 50 minutes. Yeah, big fat cunt. Do you think it is just that he can't I just run think, down his steam? I just think, yeah, he's probably just like, that'll do, people. You know, he's probably like, oh, they're just happy to see me. Maybe. But shit, it's not like they're cheap tickets. Yeah. Opinions on Action Bronson gig. Yeah, it was it was good while it lasted, like. But that was it. You mentioned the other day about vegan food. You and Maureen. What? Have you seen the trailer for Game Changers? I think it would interest you, as I know you're into fitness and food. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Uh, <laughs> I'm more into food than I am fitness. Uh, keen to know your thoughts. Let me see. What's this? I haven't heard of this, no. actually. Uh, Game Changers documentary. Let me see what this is about. <laughs> Vegan Agenda. Vegan Agenda. Sorry, hold on. Fuck my ass. What have you done? I don't know. Game changers. Let's see. Is it about vegan athletes or something? One and only Arnold Schwarzenegger. I ate a lot of meat. They showed us commercials. Steak. That's what a man eats. Selling that idea that real man eat meat. Serious man food. But you got to understand that's marketing. That's not based on reality. I've been teaching fighting techniques to government agencies for more than 15 years. Then I got injured, unable to teach for at least six months. I spent more than a thousand hours studying science on recovery and nutrition and stumbled across a study about the Roman gladiators. The gladiators were predominantly vegetarian. How could the original professional fighters be so powerful, eating only plants? When I made the switch to a plant-based diet, I qualified for my third Olympic team. I broke two American records. I was like, man, I should have done this a long while ago. When I went plant-based, I wasn't sure if I was gonna survive. And I actually became like a machine. One of the biggest misconceptions in sports nutrition is that we have to have animal protein to perform at a high level. That's just not true. Sometimes you have to do things that you know your competitors aren't doing. Today's blood and yesterday's blood. I think this is going to wake a lot of people up. 
I was recovering better, not getting as sore. This was our best season in the last 15 years, and we had 14 guys on plant-based diets. We all want to feel great, have more energy. Cholesterol was 276. Today, 169. Whoa, now you're talking. Most guys my age can keep up with the grandchildren. My grandchildren can't keep up with me. It's not one set of dietary guidelines for improving your performance as an athlete. Another one for reversing heart disease, reversing diabetes. It's the same for all of them. Someone asked me, how could you get as strong as an ox without eating any meat? And my answer was, have you ever seen an ox eating meat? Oh. Damn, son! Meow. <laughs> Now see if Ooh. I don't see if I don't fucking start this diet and become a professional athlete. I mean, it's should be challenging to do. It. I feel like it's easy to talk to professional athletes who just all of a sudden we're like, oh, I just eat plants now. <laughs> also, who's she? <laughs> and then also, who's this next dude with the fat cock skipping? What a boss move to be like. Listen, I'm a black dude with a serious. <laughs> Let's say I missed that. Who needs more meat when it's all in your pants? Are your competitors aren't doing. <laughs> You're clipping the rope on it there, you see that? <laughs> you know your competitors aren't doing. <laughs> Clip the rope. So. Sometimes you have to do things. Um, but That looks really good. I'd like to watch that. Yeah, I'd like to watch that. Do you see the producers on it? Uh, yeah. Schwarzenegger, James Cameron, Novak Djokovic. Like, big, famous, powerful people. Yeah. But also tennis. Interesting, gonna watch that. Tennis is for fruits. <laughs> <laughs> tennis is a nightmare. Did you see the final the other day? On Wimbledon? The other day, I'd have. I was about three weeks ago. I would have. <laughs> I would have went. Colin is on top of I would topics have today. <laughs> Sit in, will you? The chairs don't go any closer, Colin. I would have walked away after about two hours. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, let's watch that. Will we try and get that? Yeah. Shake my hand. Twenty published on the twentieth of June. I eat Hold a on. very vegetarian diet, not meaning to. Yeah, you Since just, I've been pregnant, I've been eating very <coughs> little meat, actually. Don't crave it at all. Don't really want it. I don't want that meat. Not weird. I actually try and make myself eat a bit to get more protein. But Yeah. Um, <coughs> I mean, but, like... Yeah, you don't need to eat meat for protein, obviously, but... Yeah. Um, it in, Anything you, about nutrition interests me. I'm not saying that I necessarily follow one thing or the other, but it, I find see, it see, so see, interesting. See, to be honest, like... There's a there's a very small amount of shit that I love. So you're like, like if your mum makes a ham, yeah. I'm not being a vegan. Suck my dick. Steak is like I don't. I'm not a big. I'll have a steak. I had a steak the other night, but I'm not like, you know, one of those guys where it's like, what's your death row meal? And you're like steak. I yeah. don't love it. It's not your absolute favorite. Do you know what I mean? Like chicken. I'm I'm nearly bored of chicken. I can't be arsed with it. Chicken's just one of those things that's always there, isn't it? Yeah, it's there's, like there's, the certain, option. there's certain things I do, like I really yeah. do, do love. Like, you know, it's mainly down to some, some meals. Like if you went to a Thai place and you're like, oh yeah, I want the noodles cooked in an egg with a few prawns in it. Like I do want that. No, but you could be vegetarian then. But pescatarian, fishcatarian. Well, yes, okay. But that's what I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's just like... If someone told me I had to give up meat and I could eat still, say, like, eggs and stuff like that and dairy, mm -hmm. I could do it. Egg? Like, I love eggs. I know. Like, I just love I guess. any type of egg. But so, like, I love, like, butter and cheese and yeah. milk and I do like a lot of dairy products. I think if you just Is cut out, like... I mean, if you, if you were to cut out, like, a load of fucking big red meats, you're also cutting out a load of seasoning, a load of f oils and fats and sauces that you just... Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of other shit goes with the meat. Yeah. You know? But I, lo I love anything that's like slow cooked. You know, like that, I got that beef noodle soup the other day. And it was like slow cooked beef. It was amazing. I heard you like do a gulp there. Like, mm. I am actually starving right now. So am I. And then we've made a veggie lasagna <laughs> with chicken in it. So we'll go eat that. Yeah. Uh, how's the, What an apt question. How's the gout? Have you been able to train much around it? I've done weights a few times, but I'll tell you what's happened. The gout cleared up. And because I was walking so funny on my foot. By the way, unconfirmed gout. Unconfirmed still. gout. Still haven't got the test back yet. Um, but the rest of my foot is kind of sore from walking on it. Fucking stupid. So I just can't wait to clear. I just want to be able to go run again because I was just getting good at running. I was not getting good. I keep saying that. I was able to go for runs that were like 
20, 20. See, I was talking to fucking Greg the other night, and he is fit as a butcher's dog. And he was like, he goes, I don't, I just do 5Ks. He goes, I just try and improve my time on 5Ks. I don't really run much further than that. That's okay. You're, yeah. You still, what, yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a shorter, hey. that's a shorter than a half an hour. That's Here's a life. Sub Everything's hour. better than nothing. Any effort is better go. than nothing. There you go. Uh, what else? Zach McZilla. What? How do you go about writing a set? I've written sketches and jokes in the past, but, co- <coughs> but coming up with 15 minutes to an hour of jokes. Well, what are you doing that for? If you've never done stand-up. And story seems so foreign. Uh, how do you do it? Love your stuff. Keep up the good work. How do you, do you have a process? I mean, mine, I mean, mine's... Probably if you were to know me as a person, like you do, my my style of thing is, is as scatty as I am in real life. Yeah. So, like, people people would really sit down and, like, write a bunch of shit and labor over it and try and figure out the wording of it. Whereas mine's just very much like, oh, there's something in that. That's kind of funny. Write it down. Oh, that's kind of funny. Write it down. And then when a gig comes up, I'll try and write a few more lines to it. Then I'll just go try it. Then hopefully... It sort of comes out half decent first time, and then I'll just gather little groups of like four or five bits and just be like, okay, that's all my bits on something. How much? So like, would an hour, you go on stage without knowing the wording? Every time. Every time. So like, if you came up with literally one thing, you could go on stage without like a script, say, well, essentially, and you could make it up on the spot. Yeah. You can do that. Well, it you sort of like. You know, it'll be like a bullet point type system. So it'll be but like you'd improvise a lot of it. So it'll be like I don't write any. I don't really write anything. The oh, only, I know you don't. But the, the only the like only thing I would out for the only thing I would write like word for word for speed is like a daily blend where I have to read it and say it to a camera. So I just for editing purposes, I'll write it word for word. But like, say say I have a bit the other night that I thought about, which was I'm gonna talk about the fact that they're like remaking everything. Mm-hmm. for equality so they're doing like a female thor and a fe- a black james bond woman and all this here shit um i just know that there's something funny about that so i basically th- the idea would be like okay if i was going to be thor people would give off about it but if natalie portman's going to be thor they seem to be okay with it and i just know that that's the premise and then I sort of think, like, what's a possible punchline? Not a lot of my stuff is, like, you know, boom, 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 no, a... punchline. Yeah. It's more like, it's like rhythmic rants. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, there's, there's like, hits within me just talking about something. Um. So that, that's about, that's literally, that's, that's about, you, that's, that's about so, enough for me to go on stage with. Yeah, there. that's what you need. But I think. And then, the, no, the idea was just, the idea is, like, you know, they're they're making things now that are so not the original. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're gonna be like, here's Thor, which is like the fucking god of thunder or whatever, who's like supposed to be a man originally. Now it's a wee small girl. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, think. And then even the idea of things are such a stretch from what they usually are. I'd be like, like the punchline might be like, oh, have you seen the new fucking King Kong? Yeah. Oh, it's a fucking duck. You know, it's like it's like something completely. But that that's that's shite. Like, but you could do a bunch of examples of that, and then just kind of use the panic on stage to like find something funny in it. But everyone does have their own like style of doing that, don't they? Everyone I mean, you, has. You, their you own might you might get someone like Chris Kent, who the writing is fucking unbelievable. Yeah. Who would maybe be like, oh, I could never just go up and just fucking talk shit like that. Everything has to be so calculated. But then his stuff's amazing. Also, I've, I mean, I've just noticed obviously doing, you know, from being in libraries, obviously a lot, I see a lot more comedy than some people. You know, you'll get people who the joke is in the writing, it's in the wording, and other people's, it's not in the wording, it's how they perform it. The delivery, So yeah. you could read it on a page and go, that's not that funny, but you see that person doing it and it's like so funny. So it's funny, isn't it? Like a writing... A joke is such a strange thing. Well, such a strange concept. Like, how do you write something yeah, like that's if funny? You, if, like, it's, if you use all your tools, it's actually hard to fucking put your finger on why it's funny. Yeah. Because what what works for you writing, some other people 
couldn't do that. They would go, that sounds insane. I couldn't go up without knowing what to say. And I've seen other comedians sit down before they're set in libraries and have literally almost like they've got a novel. Yeah. Every single word that they're going to say has been thought about and they've placed it exactly where they want it. Mm-hmm. And it's a really well scripted, crafted thing. And it's amazing. And then you could do, write down four words and other people have two A4 pages. But it's, ama- it's, it's amazing but actually again, to watch how people uh, do it differently. A lot of my bits are very short. So someone, yeah, some might, people like, like Mickey might be able to go up and do 15 minutes and it's like two stories. And it could be two different stories. Whereas yeah. I would do 15 minutes and it's like a fucking list about that long. Mm-hmm. Like it's a whole pile of shit that I have to cram in. It's a funny thing though if someone's asking advice about writing. It's like anything. You also it's can't. Like, you, it's very hard to actually You also can't really copy anyone else's format because yours might be so. That's so exactly the thing. You can't copy. What do you think about versatile? Have you seen them? They're like a, oh, no. they're like an Irish, uh, what? Irish rap group. Take your makeup off, slut. Um, yeah, it's funny. Isn't it? There's so much more of this now, isn't there? Where people are using. But the, these boys, are, these boys are getting stick because they're like you're appropriating sort of working class culture and glorifying drug taking. So like they're all taking gear in the back of the fucking stretch hummer and then it turns out they're they're not these fucking council estate scumbags they're a bunch of wee rich boys i could imagine yeah. it's dark shit bro it's tight whatever, whatever the fuck um do people from dublin like that well, there's I fucking near four million people like that shit where but, you've rubbed lipstick all over your lip oh shit you probably touched the microphone how dare you I did. but do you think just, people listen to that like because it's the, like a kind of a piss take or do people no, enjoy it yeah yeah it's kind of it's kind of like fun and like all the songs are ketamine and fucking you know, you know what i mean it's whatever it's just a bit of it's just a bit of fun in it it's not a hip-hop classic by any stretch but at least it's better than i'm gonna yeah. slit my fucking dick vein <laughs> what's the daftest thing you or a mate has done when yous were blocked. I once see my mate take a shout and a shoe at a house party once. Tell you what, I appreciate Mad. the use of the word daft. Daft? No one really That's says that. the daftest thing you've ever done. I don't know. I don't know even now. I've seen some stupid shit before. I've seen a guy at a house party run outside saying he was going to tip a cow. And he came back and he was absolutely covered in muck. Like caked in muck. And then he ran himself a bath in this person's house. Got in the bath to wash himself. And then boked in the bath and fell asleep. That is disgusting. When, was it a fancy house party one time? And they were like, don't go upstairs to the bathroom upstairs. And then eventually the queue for the pisser was so long and I ran, I ran upstairs and someone had taken a big shite in the middle of this this marble floor in the middle of this fancy house. I don't understand why people take shits places. What's your opinion on road racing? Or as I call it, GAA for prods? Well, that's a bad joke. Um, road racing... As in like as bikes? What? That could be anything. Well, I mean, it's definitely more fun than the GA. It's, def- it's definitely more exhilarating. What? Bikes? Watching fucking, like, the Northwest type shit. It's absolutely fucking mm. demented. Like it's the f- louder. The, the fact that you would have fucking a bike that goes that fast down a country road in Northern Ireland, and at any point you can just skid off the road straight through someone's fucking conservatory and, and, and into their front room. I know. Oh Jesus Christ! Look at that there. It's fucking. It's. I love the bikes. Especially. You just look at it going. Humans should not do that. It's far too quick. We're not built for that. Yeah, you just come off the bike and we you're break just. Break too easily. You're just complete jelly. It's. I mean, people die all the time. That guy that died a few years ago. It was one of the most horrendous things I have ever seen. He looked he, like there was someone had a camera set up in the garden. He came off down the road, slid off unconscious the whole way down the road, hit a curb and went like this, ba bum, and bounced in the air. Still probably doing about fucking 80 mile an hour flying through the air unconscious cr- just crumpled fucking mess like you're like what are you doing mate do it on a track if you had a gorilla what would you call it that's because I put that photo up there we can't name a baby let alone a fucking gorilla guys what's good baby names gorilla get us what might have to do if you had to choose one shoe or tr- oh this is from Dill Takes Photos uh, shout out to Dill Takes Photos if you had to choose one shoe slash trainer for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? Ooh. That's fucking tough. Rest of your life. Don't do that noise. 
I mean, just f- speaking of versatile, uh, it would probably have to be like a Vans of some sort. Did you say Vans? Mm. Didn't know if you're going to go for Nike or Vans. Or... You've kind of narrowed everything down to about a Nike or a Van at this stage, haven't you? Well, that's all I really have, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, shit. You'd say Vans, would you? I don't know. If I got a, literally, if I could have one shoe, and if someone can get me these, I will fucking hack my arm and leg off and give it to you. <laughs> Converse. Let me see if I can look them up. I'm going to get a photo of these on the podcast. Are these Con- the shoes you had? Yep. That you fucked up? Yep, and I couldn't get them anywhere. Let me see. Makes me so sad. Converse Asylum. Uh... Not women's. They were called like Converse. Oh shit, the bed. They, I, where did I buy? I can't even remember where I bought them. And it may well have been off like Sports Direct and they were like cheap because no, they didn't look like a pair of Converse. Do you know what I mean? So I think, I don't think people were buying them. But I trolled the fucking internet to get these one day. Hold on. I can't even get a fucking photo of it. Let me see. Um, Converse. No, it's it has to be the Asylum ones. You bastard. As, is that how you spell Asylum? Mid. They had a cream sole. And then, like, all leather Converse. But they, they weren't mid, though. Huh? Eh? Were... What? Yeah, they weren't mid, mid tops. This is the most exhilarating podcast, yeah. I'm sure, to listen to. Now, here's here's about as close... You see, you can't get a picture you of them. You can't even get a photo. I actually found them one time. So here, here's what we have. That's what they looked like, right? But that was... Oh, I don't even know what website I'm on. Now. They're like a canvas version of them. But they were leather. Yeah, the ones I had were all leather and they were... And what did you do to them, Colin? I put them in a washing machine and basically they fell apart. Because I'm clinically retarded. But would that really be your favourite shoe? Or is it just because you can't get them now? If I, if I could only have one shoe, I would, I would take, take that. that. Like if, if someone could get me... They were cream sole white leather. They were class. Because they were for a pair of Converse, they were like heavy and padded. They weren't like thin, like a pair. Of Good regular. for guide. Good for guide. Um, but yeah, I would take a pair of those forever if I could get them, but I can't. So it, it, I think it just for the durability and the multi multiple purpose. Mm-hmm. I would probably pick a Vans, maybe. Do you know what I mean? Fair enough. Because I don't, I couldn't settle on one pair of Nikes. I, I don't really have a specific pair of. Like I'm not a ma- like I wouldn't be dying for like. Nike Air Max, even though I have them. You know, I've got more workout shoes that are mm. Nike. Do you know what I'm saying? It'd be hard to sell them one. I'm not like an Air Force One guy. No, definitely not. No. Yeah. So I think it might have to be like Vans of some sort. We got really into that. Yeah. Super into the van talk. It's kind of all you do talk about though. Not gonna lie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, pro- probably Vans. I'm going to do a, a custom pair of Vans for the old Odyssey show. And go and die in a hole. Only joking. Uh, I'm currently listening to your last podcast where you chat about the the trans going in to get a Brazilian wax then giving off because they refuse to do it. I work in the mines in Australia and this trans chick works here too. I think she has had her bits cut off. But the question is, would you? <laughs> and it's just a fucking... Uh... She looks amazing. I mean, he's got tits and everything. The problem is, there is just a subtle softness that girls have that a man will never have. Do you know what I mean? Don't know what it is. Very subtle. Do you know what I mean? A, a, just a delicateness. Mm, but not everyone. Nah, there are some fucking brute women out there, like that's for sure. There's um, something for everyone, you know? Yeah. Is that Do you it? like a delicate girl? Huh? Do you like more of a delicate girl? Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah. Really? What would you call yourself? I don't know. You're, you're the most delicate. <laughs> <laughs> you're the most delicate of all. Your shoulder's like a knuckle. You're, <laughs> you're so small and fucking... 
You hate discomfort and pain. <laughs> You're literally like a wee princess, Maureen. Thank you. <laughs> Not really. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Uh, nothing's good enough for you. Uh, your wee princess. Uh, is that nice on your back? Yeah, I've got sore back. Oh, see, there we go. Just from sneezing once. No, so you have to lie on your side when you're pregnant. Like would you ever consider doing a podcast with Blind Boy? Yeah, why would you not consider that? Because that thing? happens. I'll ring him up. I think he I, has I, to I met Blind Boy the other day. Blind Boy came up to him and was like, oh, I've seen your video you did to Joe Rogan. You know what I mean? Keep up the good work. I'm a weekly listener from Cookstown living in Sydney. Uh, would I do one with Blind Boy? I mean, fucking maybe. If he... I don't know. I don't say. I don't give a. This is my podcast. It's easy to have a podcast and you speak to famous people, and all of a sudden you have a successful podcast. You know. This is my podcast. You listen to it for me, <laughs> and if you don't like it, you can fuck yourself and die. I'm going to turn up and wash out and slit my wrists. If you could, <laughs> if you could watch, if you could only watch either Iron or Mickey stand up for the rest of your life, who are you choosing? Ooh. Ooh, I'd kill myself. <laughs> Can you and Sir Mick hook up to do a one night only Edinburgh Fringe show? Well, I'll tell you better than that. Jamie's dad guide, he's doing a 25 night Fringe show. <laughs> he's on fucking... He's, on the fringe. he's doing the Fringe and his show's called Love It and he ordered a pair of shoes which were from Nike and he, you're allowed three letters on the back of each shoe and he got L-O-V and then on the other shoe got E-I-T and he is fucking medically retarded for doing that because obviously yeah. the answer would be to write L-U-V and then on the other shoe have I-T but he's going to be limping through Edinburgh with fucking dropped arches with his shoe saying love you it damn bitch that was the last question I'm not your phone. No way. I don't know. How do we finish? How do we finish on this? I'm taking care. Fucking, fucking, fuck. I'm sick of everything. Fuck. Fuck you all. What have we learned today? Emo goth rap sucks fucking dick skin. All comedians yeah. from down south suck cock skin. Uh, I like these shoes. and uh, The impossible shoes to get. And I've said retarded so many times that I've ruined any career. That I might have had on TV. Yeah. But sure, what else are you going to do? I, I don't know, I'm lost now. Uh, I'm not sure if this podcast was uplifting or oh, it was. confusing. I shake my hand, Warren. Thanks for doing my podcast. No problem, Colin. Thanks. Should we go eat some food now? Yeah, I'm going to eat a vegetarian lasagna, which has chicken in it, which chicken. is for me is pretty much vegetarian. You call it vegetarian just if there's vegetables in it? Correct. Absolutely correct. Let's watch that documentary. Yep. Uh, right, see you later, guys. Um... Shout out to all the stuff, okay? Lavery's 7th of August. We'll be releasing tickets for a new podcast soon. The tour is on sale at shine.net. Check it out. Might be coming to a town here. Yay. And uh, there's a second night at the Odyssey on sale. <laughs> Can't get booked for a festival, but I'll sell out an arena. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Touch my vagina. You should be a woman. That's what you need. Uh, I should be a woman? <laughs> yeah. I would be disgusting, wouldn't it? <laughs> you get on festivals easier. Probably get red, no sweat, though, because that's women for you, isn't it? Let's not start that. Excuse me. I'm uh, disgusting and have a cock, but you're... Fuck me. You'd get dick. Join us next week. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a good ending. Where I'll be here by myself, uh, divorced. <laughs> Right, right here, Morning. Let's do it. See you Let's later, guys. Hello, Cheers hi. for listening. We'll work on the material for next week. So it's better. Bye.